King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valarfax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old king Alant had aroused the old one, the great beast below the nexus from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls also lose their minds. The mad attack the sane, and chaos reigns. Valarfax spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force, and the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors were drawn to the accursed land, but none have returned. Bjor of the Twin Fangs, Yurt the Silent Chief, Sage Urbane, Skurver the Wanderer, the Sixth Saint Astraea and her knight Garl Vinland and Sage Frake the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Good evening, soldiers. Welcome to Demon Cells. As always, this is X Rider 169 from X Rider Games. And this is attempt number two of trying to record Demon Souls. Uh, those that have been around on the channel for a while uh, might know that I originally intended to do this one like a year ago, which I recorded the first episode, but then my laptop started acting super funny, and long story short, I couldn't record it because my laptop would freak out. But now that I have the new computer up and running, I can finally get back to business and get this done. So, going over basic controls. R1, basic attack. R2, strong attack. L1 brings up your shield. L2 is parry. Circle while holding in a direction is a roll, as you can see it sucks right now. Just pressing circle neutral is a back step. X is to interact with your environment. Square is to use your item at the bottom left corner, in this case the Crescent Moongrass, which is a healing item. Triangle lets you dual wield your, or dual wield, two hand uh, your weapon, and pressing it again makes it go back to normal. I think that's basically it. Uh, D pad can change the item you're holding in your right hand, um, as well as um, all the directions corresponding to D pad. Start brings up your inventory screen, blah blah blah. As you can see, the game does not stop, stop while you have it. The game does not stop while you press 
start, so no pausing in this game. Pausing is for wimps. So for now, we'll just go at it with our regular armor right here. It does make us a little bit slower, which is a uh, thing. Enemy. These guys aren't too bad. The draglings, as they're called. But, um... Yeah. For the most part, this LP is going to be kind of lore-heavy. We'll see, because technically I haven't beaten Demon Souls yet. I've beaten all the other Souls games, I just never got around to beating Demon Souls. And technically, this is the tutorial area, so for the most part, I'm going to... I'm going to look at the notes that are written on the floor right here. But uh, I'm not going to go over them in great detail, but as you can see, that makes you run. Pay attention to your stamina, top left corner. I assume I won't need to go over that. Good stuff we've already covered. Just wanted to get it out of the way early. Bam, bam, bam. Ooh. Easy now. Oh man, the Bloodborne has, has ruined me because I'm so used to the fast gameplay. Pressing the art. R3 will let you lock. I forgot to go over that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's a self. Probably shouldn't go over tutorial stuff when there's tutorial stuff in the level. Just makes things a whole lot more convenient. Okie dokie. As far as the area goes, um, there hasn't been much to talk about, but there was a courtyard out there, which, like I said, there's not much to talk about out here. But let's, you know, let's just look back. For the most part, this looks like it's actually an aqueduct. Which leads me to believe that this is... Pr I Either it's actually a different part of Boletaria that we aren't able to access later in the game. Or it is an outpost. Which I'm more inclined to believe it's an outpost. As you can see, we cannot go here. But we'll get to that eventually. Eventually. Down there, that leads me to believe that, there's, that that's the main entrance. And yes, I know you're up here, Dregling. We're going to try and do some uh, epic name bro and uh, German spy stuff in this LP. We're going to try. Keyword try. We'll see how long it takes before I just start talking about dicks. Doki. I don't know why I felt the need to roll there. Okie dokie. Um, it does look as though there's a bridge over there. or It looks to be a bridge. Some kind of structure. Which, that actually may be uh, an area that leads to Boletaria. And it's, it's really difficult to see. A lot of people assume that this area doesn't really have any lore significance, but I'd like to think it does. Crescent Moongrass, as I mentioned earlier, is a healing item. Actually, while we're doing that, let's read some item descriptions. I don't think they're as detailed as in Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but let's go over it. Crescent Moongrass, a medicinal herb named for the lunar phase, recovers a small amount of the user's HP. The effect of the moon herbs changes according to the condition they're in. Crescent Moon Herbs are picked when they are very young. Half Moon Grass, same thing. The effect of the moons, blah, blah, blah. Ah, the uh, end of it is different. Half Moon Herbs are picked when they are withered. Interesting. Royal Lotus, the petal of a crimson flower that floats on the water, removes poison from the user's body. This flower became famous as an ornament of nobility because of its beauty. Okay. Don't have anything there. The Augit of Souls. A stone radiant with the light of souls. The color of the light changes according to the souls in the area. It was made by... Jerry? I assume that's how you pronounce it. Like I said, I haven't beat this game, so excuse me. A friend of Sage Freck, who is known for his magical crafts. Since it's light and e since it's light and easy to handle, it is widely used by travelers. Basically, it's just a lantern. Long sword. Standard straight sword. Straight swords are the most standard and versatile weapons. In addition to its stable standard attack type against most targets, it also has a powerful thrusting attack, which we will be making good use of. Hello, phone! Mailbreaker, an extremely small rapier. It has no blade and can, pier and can pierce even heart. It has no blade and can pierce even hard armor. Hmm, interesting. Uh, rapiers have a narrow attack range but deal heavy damage. They work well against metal armor and hard scales, but are easily parried and have difficult and have difficulty breaking enemies' guards. Kite, which we're probably not going to be using the mailbreaker because it's not really that great. Kite shield, a medium-sized metal shield used by the soldiers of the comparatively more advanced region of Southern Belataria. The crest of the yellow dragon signifies the soldier's lower rank. So, that's actually a little bit, or it can be, a little bit more uh, related to lore 
because it might give an indication as to who the character is, depending on which class you pick. I'm probably going to cut that out because I kind of don't want to go over all of that, but uh, for the most part we're playing the knight character, so that might actually give some actual roleplay aspect to the game. Don't have anything in that bow and arrow, fluted helmet. An iron helmet with finely cut grooves. It is used by the knights of a relatively advanced region of southern Boletaria. The fine grooves are designed to enhance the protective effect of the, iron, of the thin iron sheet. Its heaviness slightly impedes stamina regeneration, as we saw earlier. Um, that's weird. The only difference in this description is that they changed the uh, comma with the groove at the end of grooves to a period. Even though this isn't a helmet. Very interesting. I've never noticed that. Iron gauntlets with finely cut grooves. They're the same thing, same thing. And the same thing. Okay. And we don't have any rings yet, so... There's our, there's our um, reading of item descriptions for today. As far as I know, I don't believe you can actually... Or actually, I think you can, now that I'm thinking about it. If you roll right before you hit the ground, you might be able to avoid that damage. I don't remember off the top of my head. There's some more tutorial stuff. But I didn't get to finish saying that uh, I would like to think that this area has at least some lore significance. Probably not a lot, but I'd like to think that it does. I'm going to try and parry this guy. See how that works. Nope. That attack actually does a lot of damage. There we go. If you parry them at the right moment, you can get a... I forget what it's actually called. I think it's just called a regular parry in this game. Uh, basically, it it's a counterattack that does a lot of damage, and at this stage in the game, it'll probably kill one-shot kill almost anything other than bosses. This is an interesting area, because that is actually where we uh, started out. And normally when you see ghosts like that, as you saw walk through here, that is normally uh, another human character, i.e. another player, but I'm actually playing online, so that's actually a dev uh, phantom right there. I'll call them that for the sake of it. Ooh, Ragdoll! I love it. Which, it's weird because he goes through that area, but there's no way to open that door. So very interesting. Uh, for the most part, I don't know what this is. Very interesting. It could be a mausoleum, which I highly doubt. You can't really see anything through here. But the architecture seems to, like kind of reminds me of a mausoleum, which, like I said, I seriously doubt it. And this also looks to be in a mountainous region, which again kind of uh, leads me to believe that this is probably an out uh, an outpost of Boletaria, or it could actually be the actual uh, Boletarian castle, just an area we're not able to uh, see. I don't think there's anything over here, but I don't want to doubt myself. No, looks like we're good. And we got an arch stone here. I don't know if there's any lore significance behind that, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Uh, basically, arch stones allow us to warp to different areas. At this case, it's going to take us to a different area. All right. So now that we've spawned in, uh. Interesting. I don't know where this would lead. Maybe if we can take a look out here later. Our too strong attack, of course. This is actually very interesting, because this is actually a Boletarian soldier. Again, leading me to believe that this is a outpost. But who knows? Who knows? I don't think they ever go over it. But... Um, People might be asking, why did he attack us if he's a, if he's supposedly a good guy and technically our our character as of right now is uh, another Boletarian, so or actually part of Southern Boletaria. Well, the short answer is when you lose your souls, you go insane. That's basically it. There we go. Not bad, not bad at all. Ooh, I love old Ragdoll. I love it. Here's our first actual threat of the game. He's a pretty tough enemy for early, but if you're... Calm down. But if you're a veteran Souls player, you you should be able to take care of him relatively easily. 
think so. I should also mention, bottom right corner, that is your soul count. Souls are basically currency in this game. That's all I have to say about that. When you kill an enemy, you get souls. There you go. Uh, the message back there told us to dual wield, which is supposed to be a hint as to breaking guards. As you can see, this guy has a shield. Hit it a couple of times. A few times, rather. There you go. Actually, I think if you use strong attack, it breaks it in one shot. I don't know. I don't know if that was a fluke or not, so we'll try that again. Yeah, if you use strong attack, it breaks it in two. So keep that in mind. Those guys also drop quite a bit of souls. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Actually, we need to go back. We need to go back. There was stuff to talk about. Potentially stuff to talk about. I actually don't think we get a good outside view. Where was it? Where was it? That leads to the surface, but we can never go up there, of course. And up here looks to be... I don't know. Potentially, this might be where a demon threw projectiles, or perhaps this place, I'm assuming outpost as I mentioned earlier, might have been attacked by a third party. We are not sure. Either that or the place is under construction, but from the looks of it, I assume it was destroyed. That's about all there is to that. I should also mention, veteran Souls players, go easy on me, it's my first time. Because I know I'm going to get some details wrong, and oh boy am I going to get chewed out for it. Mmm, can't wait. Can't wait at all. It's going to be so good, girl. You don't even know. Note to self, take off armor here in a moment. Right now it's not a big issue because we don't really need to utilize uh, rolling as much. Later on, however... There's another thing I forgot to mention. Press forward and R1 at the same time, you get a push. It doesn't do any damage, but it can stagger enemies. I think that's also an alternative to uh, breaking guard. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Unknown soldier's soul. The remnants of a nameless soldier's spirit that remained on its corpse. Use it and the souls will be added to your stock. Even if you leave this be, it'll only, be it'll only become nourishment for demons. In which case, why not use it for ourselves? Am I right? Ooh, I didn't know these things had physics. These chains. Amazing. Uh, I'm not sure why these chains would actually be here. Very interesting. Ooh, he had some item. Uh, do, 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 do. We can't really get a good look up uh, up above. This leads me to believe that it's this is more than likely a tower. Again, another closed off area, which you, I think you can actually kind of see out there. But again, no possible way for us to get there. Ooh, this is the this is the this is the subject of a lot of interesting uh, topics. A lot of people assume that this is blood, which I'm inclined to believe. As you can see by the blood stains, I would like to assume that this is blood, which is probably being boiled for the area's, uh, the boss's, the area boss's, uh, dinner. Which seems likely, seems likely. A lot of people like to speculate about that. Which is interesting, it's interesting. Makes for an interesting conversation, at least. Got some more crescent moon grass. Uh, I should also mention there's no jump in this game, so if you've played Dark Souls first and are going back to Demon Souls, you can't jump. I believe the fog gates are here simply to disguise uh, loading. If you get behind an enemy and press R1, you can backstab them, which deals a lot of damage. It's an alternative to the uh, parry attack. Uh, backstabs are a little bit easier to do, but that's not saying much, because in this game it is pretty difficult. Ah, this is interesting. This is another Knight of Southern Boletaria. Very interesting. I never noticed that before. Again, we can see up slightly. Or actually... Oh, this is the area that I was saying earlier, so apparently you can get up here. Very interesting. 
Um, yeah, nothing, nothing much else to go, go about. Oh well. Like I said, I'd like to think there's a little bit more lore significance here, but uh, I imagine I'm probably just full of it. Uh, also, normally fall gates indicate bosses, which up here is a boss. So let's eat some grass. And for this, we are going to take off our helmet. And let's try taking off our gauntlets. Now we're still too heavy, so let's take off our armor. Put our gauntlets back on. Let's try that. Alright, this is what we want. We want a good roll like this to avoid damage, because if you try and block uh, the boss's attack, he's basically just going to break it and drain all your stamina. So shield is of a big no-no here. You can use it if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. You don't have to roll, and a lot of people say don't lock onto him. I like to lock onto him. It's worked for me in the past. Go oh, away. Hey. Gotta be careful. And technically, you don't need to roll. You just need to walk under it, under his uh, swing. I should also mention this guy's name is Vanguard. See, if I found that in a lot of Souls games, if you roll towards the attack, more than likely you'll avoid damage. Of course, this isn't the case for every boss, but it's the case for many of them. And fuck. <sighs> All right, so we're back again. It figures it's the it's the LP curse. As soon as you start recording, everything goes downhill. Such is how I got decimated by the single soldier. Amazing. But something I should mention before we go to fight the boss again. Uh, I went th I went through the area again, obviously, because. Um, Demon Souls is a, you can't go in in this stage at least you can't go back simply because this is just a tutorial level it doesn't matter if you win but I want to win because there are some items you can get that you can get super early but uh, as I was saying before before we go in here uh, as I was going through the area again there are a lot of um, corpses of Southern Bolitarian knights. As made apparent by the fluted armor, it is used by the knights of a relatively advanced region of the Southern Boletaria. Okie dokie. So that leads me to believe that either this is a rival castle that is uh, south of the Boletarian castle, which wouldn't make much sense um, considering that they all belong to the same province. So of course that's not necessarily true. It could be a rival army that just took up residence in Southern Boletaria. I don't know, and they never explain it. Or this could just be an extension of Boletaria, of the Boletarian castle that we visit, that is, um, that is just to have, that, eh, that they have equipped their knights with uh, more advanced uh, armor, which that in, a, in and of itself doesn't make much more sense, because why wouldn't you uh, equip your main forces with um, more advanced armor. But I digress. For the most part, I'm not going to talk much during this boss fight, just so I can concentrate and not fuck up again. So, we'll try it again. I was debating whether or not I should uh, lock on, but I think I'm going to do it just in case. Don't be deceived by that range. Sometimes that will clip you if you're not careful. You can normally get about two shots in. And I need to get him away from this wall. See what I mean? That that has some stupid range right there. Oh boy! So much for not talking much. Oh, that was bullshit. That was some bullshit right there. Doesn't really make much sense to heal, but I'll do it again just in case. Just in case I get clipped and I survived. <laughs> Which more than likely I won't if I get clipped by that axe. We're just going to take things slow because I don't want this to be more embarrassing than it already was. Hmm, that's interesting. I noticed the thing there. And we need to get away! 
I'll talk about it after we finish uh, fighting the Vanguard. That's where I was fucking up earlier, that he, he would get too close to the fucking ball. Yes, please get stuck in a pattern. I don't want to have to fight you again. Okay, good. Good, he's stuck in a pattern. He's stuck in a pattern. We're gonna lame it out. We're gonna lame it out. You see, that's why locking on fucks you up. So we're gonna turn that off. Oh. Okay. Get away from the wall, please. Because that's what was screwing me up earlier, as well as the lock on. Careful with that. Okay. I actually think that one should have clipped me. I, that was unfair. Let's try doing a strong attack. See how that goes. It does an extra. I think I was doing 48 neutral. Let's try that. It's doing a little bit more. Not worth their extra risk, though. I wouldn't say. Okay, back off. Shit. I'm not gonna heal again. No point in it. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> there it goes. All right, Vanguard's dead. He looks pretty cool, I'll admit. Anyway, what I uh, noticed during the boss fight, uh, while I was coming up here, as I mentioned, there are a lot of uh, Southern Bolotarian knight corpses. I also found two other corpses, which look to be similar to... That's another Bolotarian. Looks similar to this guy. Or is that another... Hmm, I can't tell. That may have been, that may have been a fluted, uh, fluted armor as well. We got the Grey Demon's Soul. Sadly, this game doesn't have as uh, diverse uh, lore significance for its items as Dark Souls does. The Soul of the Demon Vanguard. It radiates a strong power. Grants the holder a large number of souls when used. Alternatively, it could be made into spells, miracles, or weapons. And that's basically what all of them say. Another thing about Archstones is that if you have uh, health missing, which of course you might have health missing most of the time if you touch the Archstorm, you will be recovered when you spawn in the next area. Mephistopheles. Okay, that doesn't take too long. So, we're transported to a new area. Now, this looks very different. Very different from where we were earlier. So, we're going to talk about this area for a little bit. The carvings and everything don't seem to be... Um, they don't look Bolitarian to me. They look like a... They seem reminiscent of an area later on in the game called Stonefang Tunnel, which which many people would like to assume this is the area of Stonefang Tunnel, just a different area. We got full moon grass, that's actually a new item. Hooray. The effect of the moon herb full moon herbs are collect are collections of wilted herbs that emit a faint light even in their wilted state. And it recovers almost all your HP, so that's very useful. Uh these corpses look just like the standard uh, wanderers but the reason i wanted to beat the vanguard so bad um is because you start if you beat them you get a reward for doing so you get a lot of full moon grass i don't think there's anything up here no looks like we're good don't forget this guy over here another another fluted armor this is basically to show you that the that the dragon over here is uh Nothing to mess around with. We got shard of uh, sharp stone. Oh boy! Let's see. A shard of hard ore enhances straight swords, axes, hammers, and so on. A basic ore that evenly increases the power of a weapon. Weapons can be strengthened by hard stones up to a maximum of level ten. Okay. Basically, weapon crafting. Sharp stone. I think it's the same thing, but we'll go. A shard of sharp ore enhances daggers, curved swords, spears, and so on. So it's a little bit different. Ooh, we don't want to roll out there yet. Renowned Soldier, it's the same thing as the other one. Renowned. So basically it gives you some more currency. So if we look out here, we can see that there's a volcano in the back. 
Now, but you can also see that the sky appear, appears to be uh, visible, which uh, later on in the game when you get to Stonefang, um, when you fight the dragon boss, uh, which of course, I, I'm, I'm assuming that everyone would assume that you do fight this thing eventually. Um, he is actually in a cave, so... This leads me to believe that this isn't an area of Stonefang, but I'd, I'd still like to assume that it's an extension of the Bolitarian out, of the Southern Bolitarian outpost that we were just in. Um, this also seems to be the original spot, I assume, when the game was first being developed, uh, where you would fight him, because as you can see over there, there are ballista. There's a ballista. Another one. So this leads me to believe that this is uh, remnants of the original boss fight. But, uh, we'll never know. I actually don't know that myself. I, I remember uh, Epic Name Bro talking about that when he was playing, so that's a possibility. That's actually pretty cool. I've never had the camera glitch out like that to where it's spinning. It makes it look a little bit cooler. Soul of the Lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the Lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. This is the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not exit the Nexus. But each of the five arch stones will connect them to the You have died, and the Nexus has trapped your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your physical body. And we got the Nexal Binding. We'll go over all of that, and then we'll c call it a day for today. Let's see, where is it? Well, it's under this, I believe. The symbol of those imprisoned in the Nexus. Having this ties you to the Nexus, even if you lose your physical body, you cannot die, and your soul remains trapped in the Nexus. The Nexal Binding sends the user back to the Nexus upon death, but all souls collected will be lost. So basically, when you die, your health is cut in half, and you lose all your currency. Amazing. Uh, what we're in right now is called Soul Form, which you can see by the apparent aura that we have. And I'm going to put my armor back on. I don't care if it makes me slow. Bam! Yes. Uh, should I talk to NPCs? Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that for today. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the arch stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it? To this accursed volatarium. Something of it, something that uh, relates to the opening cinematic. Um, the rumors had gone that um, if you slay a demon and absorb their soul, you in turn become a, just as power. You you gain their demon's power. Which, um, that leads to what he said, um, did you come to save this land, or did you come just to get power? Which, of course, is left up to the player to decide, why are you here? Are you here to get power, or are you here to save the world? Or at least Northern Boletaria. Which, uh, another thing that the Maiden in Black said, um, she said that the Nexus binds Northern Boletaria. Which, as I, as I said earlier, I suspect that the tutorial area is linked to Southern Boletaria. 
which might explain why the arch stones there do not link us back here, because it's not part of Northern Boletaria. Unless it's that arch stone up there, so I don't know. That's uh, definitely a possibility as well, but I'd like to think that uh, the outpost that we were just at is actually part of Southern Boletaria. But again, we will never know. That's one of the beauty of these... That's one beautiful thing about these games. You can interpret it however you want. Ha 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 ha. Let's talk to the remaining uh, I NPCs. I old Thomas. When the scourge came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here, in the Nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. Ooh, there's so much to talk about, so much to talk about. Uh, Stockpile Thomas basically holds on to the items that you don't need right now. Uh, looks like everything we want here. Um, do this. No, souls don't have weight. Uh, bottom right corner, item burden. Once you hit 90, you cannot hold anything else. So, you need to drop your shit here every time. Which, I kind of like it, but at the same time I kind of hate it, because uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, uh, they fixed that problem, which I don't think it's technically a problem. But now that they've come, now that those games are around as well, I do see it as a, as a, a difficulty booster. Because then you always have to come back to drop off your load. Which, uh, we're gonna, mm, we're gonna drop off our Hearthstone and our sharp stone, because uh, when you use weapon crafting or to upgrade your weapons, you can still access your ores from Stockpile Thomas's inventory, so you don't have, you, you literally don't have to carry them with you. Um, I might get rid of the mail breaker, but we'll see. We'll see, I'll decide by next episode. Rest assured, best of luck to you. Whoops, I didn't check. Let's uh, talk to him. I abandoned my wife and daughter fled like a madman. When I came to, I was in the Nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more, but I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. There's something very interesting. He says that he hasn't left the Nexus. But another thing that's interesting is he's still alive. You can tell because he doesn't have the aura around him. Which makes it seem like if you've never died, or if you if you're still in rep, um, if you, as long as you don't have the Nexo binding, I assume you can leave the Nexus anytime you choose. Of course, he's not going to leave because he's scared, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that he has the Nexo binding. Because the only way to regain your actual physical body is to slay a demon, which Stockpile Thomas couldn't have done because he's not a warrior. He's just a simple guy. That candle maiden cared for me first days in the Nexus. She says very little, but has a kind heart. She's just the age my young daughter would have been. The poor, poor girl, trapped here with her eyes occluded by wax. If only something could be done to help her. Which currently she's not hanging around. If only something could be done to help Okay, so you're done. Best of luck. But yeah, he's still alive, and he doesn't seem to have the abilities to actually defend himself. And normally, I wouldn't uh, think much too, too much into it, simply because, oh, well, he's probably dead, but they just didn't animate the uh, aura around him. But they took the time to animate it on him, which he's fucking dead, so <laughs> that's a thing. Got a couple more NPCs here. A few more, actually. You're new here? Do you have my services? The name's Baldwin, just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons, or forge ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. With my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, huh? Again, another character that seems to be alive. Uh, he does have some items for sale. We've got Crescent Moongrass, Fresh Spice, a sweet-smelling spice which soothes the soul, recovers some of the user's MP. 
It is used by royalty as a luxury and by the magicians a necessity. We've also got Ed's grindstone, a sharpening stone used by Ed, the blacksmith of Stonefang. So he's from Stonefang, as we can see. Reduces, reduces the wear on, on the right hand weapon and restores its durability. All right, we got several items here. We got a dagger, a standard dagger, a slashing weapon that inflicts heavy damage on soft flesh, but has who has a has a, a limited effect on metal armor and hard scales. Mmm, typos. Daggers are very effective after parrying, as well as in close range stabs from behind. I uh, no, we've got the long sword. A small straight sword. Straight swords are the most standard versatile. Oh, okay, we've already read that. Battle axe, a standard axe. It is a versatile weapon with a standard attack type, reliable against many opponents. Following through with one swing and landing the hit will deal a direct hit, which does dam more damage than normal. That's another system that we'll talk about in the next episode. Heater shield, medium-sized metal shield. Since it is easy to handle, it its use its use is widespread, um, especially amongst the soldiers of the church. Interesting. We got arrow, standard arrow used with a bow. Range attacks require that a bow and an, and arrows be equipped. Bolt, standard, blah, blah, blah. Range attacks require both crossbow and bolts to be equipped. So we don't have none of that yet. We can repair stuff, though. Uh, I think we're good for now. Actually, you know what? We're going to do it. It's only 27 souls. So, also, you can upgrade our weapons, which I'm not entirely sure if I want to upgrade my longsword yet. We'll see. Perhaps you've already heard that there's another blacksmith at the entrance of Stonefang Mine. He's an eccentric old man, but he knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul starving. If you do meet him, yeah, forget it. That stomach will near the well, will just ignore you. There aren't enough blacksmiths in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain oars can be used to forge weapons, but you just have to make do. Be thankful that I'm still of good health. Be thankful. You okay. come back. So, again, he's another character that seems to be alive. He doesn't have the same uh, soul form aura that we do. Um, which, again, brings up the question, how is he alive? At least he seems a little bit more capable because he's a blacksmith, but again, he then again, he's very um, elderly, so that leads me to believe that he possibly couldn't defend himself either. Which again, lead, brings up the question, why is he here? How is he here? Well, how is the why and how are the, sim, are the simple answers, because, I mean, we can assume they died, but he doesn't have the same soul form aura, so he's th alive. How did he get here? How, how, how? At least with these characters, we have a little bit... Well, this character, rather. We have a little bit more insight as to how they got here. Why? How has this happened? Has God abandoned us for failing to show proper respect to King Alamit? Oh, Mbasa. So, she gives off the aura that... Well, not the literal soul aura, but um, the impression that she doesn't know how she got here either. Um, but she does seem to be a follower of the church, which l could possibly indicate that she knows how to use miracles, which at least that's a way that she could have possibly defended herself. So that might be a uh, indication as to how she got here. She might have died and come back, killed a demon, got her body back, but I don't know. I'd like, I, I'm not going to think too much into it, but it's very interesting to think. Uh, she's also got some looks like gems. Interesting. I don't think they have any lore significance, but... Oh, mm -hmm. But interesting. Oddly enough, she did mention has God abandoned us for showing uh, disrespect to King Alant, which, um... There is a God in the, de in the Demon so Souls world, so there's a higher de deity that, um... that is uh, present in this universe, but... Again! We will get to that later. Not, not half bad for my first lore kind of run through. Not half bad at all. At least I don't think it was bad. Please, 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 Demon Souls community, please Souls community, go easy on me. Please. But anyway, I will see you guys next time. This is X-Ray One Six Nine, signing off.